This is a approximately 25 minutes where the people in this room who always feel like they don't know what's going on can learn a little bit more about what's going on on the technical side, the underpinnings of the Wikimedia projects. I have a couple ground rules. One, I am okay with your questions about technical topics. If you don't know what something is, if you've seen this noun or verb over and over again and you're embarrassed you don't know what it is, now is a fine time to ask what that noun or verb is. Adjectives. Maybe adjectives. Another is, hey developers, shut up. I'm kind of serious about this. I am going to be giving oversimplifications to help newbies understand what Git is, what it is to deploy the site, what an API is, what extensions versus core are. I am going to oversimplify a hell of a lot. Please shut up and don't do the wait actually. So, and then, you know, 25 minutes from now, you can, you know, you know say during the Q&A, hold on, hold on, hold on. But during, when I'm actually explaining stuff, please. Um, so. Uh, just to get things rolling a little bit, I, I got, uh, I canvassed the audience to ask a couple of like, okay, what are some things you've always wondered about? And one of them is a social question about different roles that people have within engineering. And another is a little bit more of a technical question, like what is an API anyway? So I'll start with the social question. So software development, the process of making computers do what the hell they ought to do um, is, the, the person that you probably think of most often is a software developer, a coder, someone who uh, writes in a different language that is not a human language to make a computer do what it ought to do. Some other roles that are important and that we have most of at the Wikimedia Foundation or within the larger Wikimedia engineering community. Um, there are, quote, designers. Design is one of the vaguest words in the English language, um, but at least at the foundation, designers think about how something ought to work from the perspective of the person using it, what it ought to do, what it not ought to do, what the experience of using it ought to be like on a visual and like an interaction level. There are testers and people who work on quality assurance. If you hear people tossing around the uh, abbreviation QA, that means quality assurance, which means a variety of things, including poking at something and seeing if it breaks, and if so, how, and writing a really detailed report on exactly how it works. That's what a, quote, bug report is. Um, QA also includes writing automated tests so that machines, which can do th things faster than us and more accurately sometimes, will run through and see if stuff breaks in an automated way so that if we try and change something, it'll send up an alert. Another role that's fairly important is that of documenting, writing in English or you know, usually in English for us, um, how s a piece of software works, um, why it works that way, how it is going to be changing the future, and how to interact with it, how other programmers or users in the future ought to interact with it. That's a, you know, quite the simplification. Um, that, those are some of the key roles. Um, oh yeah, managers. And then there's people like me. Um, what's the line? Like, those who can do, those who can't do, get MBAs. Um, I, I don't have an MBA. I have a master's in tech management, which uh, I think just barely saved me uh, from just turning into an utter suit-wearing weirdo. Um, anyway, so those are some of the roles that we have within like software engineering as a whole. Um, I think you are the one who asked that question. Do you have maybe, uh, who's the person who controls the mic? Do you, are you the one who has the handheld mic to go around ask, uh, getting questions from the audience? So. Um, did, uh, you can just nod or, or say no. Did that basically answer your question? Product management. Product management. Okay, yes. I have a blind spot sometimes because I, I live in New York City and all the product managers live in San Francisco. Um, so when I said that design is the process of figuring out like how something ought to work and so on, um, I would say, and people will argue with me a lot, that product management, uh, the, that term is sort of related to design. Uh, product managers at the Wikimedia Foundation um, gather information from the community, from designers, from software developers about 
what kind of features, what kind of functionality is ne are necessary, and think about how to prioritize how to make it work. Um, I know this is very vague. Uh, they'll you know, write specifications, communicate with the larger community about that kind of stuff, and help prioritize what work needs to happen next. Are there any product managers in the audience who can just brain me with a cudgel if I'm really wrong? No? Maybe you can clarify the difference between a project manager and a product manager. Okay, a project versus a product manager. This is good, yeah. So at the foundation, we don't have anyone who is specifically labeled as a project manager in the engineering department, I think, right now. At least that's not in their title. They don't have project manager in their title right now. But um, within, so this is, a, the, there are a couple terms that you're going to see throughout the software engineering industry that vary a little bit at every place, um, like as in how people define what those things mean. One of them is program manager, which seems to be different every place. But there's two pretty uh, strong division, uh, like th there's two things that often are quite very different, um, uh, and we are fairly consistent. And when we label someone a project manager, though we don't have anyone called that right now, versus a product manager, we're, we're pretty consistent with every, everybody else, I think, and what that means. A product manager is what I just talked about in terms of thinking about the product, its user experience as a whole, um, prioritizing what features ought to be built and what bugs needs to be fixed and so on. A project manager, uh, have you ever heard the phrase cat herding? <laughs> yeah, um, uh, a project manager is, uh, I can't help but, but be really um, derogatory, actually, even though I am a project manager in many ways. I think this shows internalized self-loathing that I need to work on. Um, <laughs> But um, a, a project manager uh, does things in a, a much more uh, micro way in terms of you know, helping manage individual people, figuring out what they ought to be uh, doing next, helping them overcome obstacles to their work, um, and uh, communicating with other parts of the organization around uh, their, their needs and what's, what's going to happen next. Um, so uh, that, that does seem a bit vague, but fortunately um, that's okay because there's no one at the foundation who's labeled a project manager right now, so I think I haven't insulted anyone. All right, so um, how much more time do I have left, Greg? Because I kind of... Ate a lot of time on that, I think. I have uh, 15. I have 15 minutes left. Jeez. All right. Um, there is someone here who had a question about APIs. If you have a question, raise your hand, and I'll bring over the mic for you, so you don't have to lose your voice. Do you, does anyone rem remember that you had a question? Oh, yeah, was that you? No. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'll, I'll start with him. What, what, is, you just have it yeah. what is an API? Okay. So. API often stands for Application Programming Interface. That's not useful to you at all. Like, you hate me right now for saying that. Like, you're like, what, I have to remember that now? You don't have to remember that. Um, so I'm going to, again, really oversimplify here. Like, let's say you are looking at a website. And it is, let's say, the Internet Movie Database. And you are looking at an article, you know, you're looking at uh, uh, the movie the Matrix, and you realize, huh, Keanu Reeves was in this movie and yet it's rated well. <laughs> um, I wonder if that's true of all the movies that Keanu Reeves is in, that he's inexplicably in well-rated movies or something like that. And then um, you as a person are presented with an interface that is a web page. It's HTML. It's meant for people to look at. It's meant for browsers to render so people can look at it. But if you wanted to um, not look at all the probably dozens of movies that Keanu Reeves has been in, um, and instead wanted to just at, like ha tell your computer to ask the IMDb computer, you know, what are all the movies that uh, Keanu Reeves has been in, so I can automatically like get just the ratings, just the ratings of those movies. Like I, as a person, don't want to actually go through and look at all those. Um, then you can tell your computer to talk to the IMDb computer to get the information more efficiently in a way that, that, that your computer can then um, act upon and analyze and maybe even turn into a little part. Like maybe you could write a little mobile phone app for yourself that tells you whenever Keanu Reeves has been in a new movie. Um, and the way that computers talk to each other over the internet, um, we have to build application programming interfaces. Like the web is like a human interface. 
the, the, at least the, the web that you and I see. And then APIs are the ways that uh, we can make it so that programs can talk to uh, other websites much more efficiently. So the MediaWiki API is the way that we have created so that other people can write apps and bots and other and programs and scripts to get Wikimedia data and interact with it and upload stuff without a human having to like go through and, and squint at things. Is that reasonably clear? Okay. Uh, there's a question over there. Oh, Thanks for taking first. my question. Um, what is the best piece of advice that you can give to someone who is sort of tech savvy but looks at um, the MediaWiki platform and says, I'm not even sure what to do to this, and I want to build something that my company can use internally, sort of perhaps as an intranet-ish platform, but something that we can share information with each other on? That's a really good question. So um, in a sense, what you have asked me is partly a product specification question about like, OK, here is something that my company might need. Is MediaWiki the right tool? And another is a sort of a, bootstra a personal bootstrapping question of how do I learn the answers to these questions? Um, so I'll start with the product specification answer, which is um, you should probably chat with a MediaWiki expert. Uh, in this case, I am more expert than you, so I count as a MediaWiki expert. Uh, there are other people here uh, who are developers. The people who I told to shut up, they can talk to you in 12 minutes or so um, when I unzip their lips uh, <laughs> and uh, talk with you about what your org specific needs are and whether MediaWiki is a good fit. Um, the key bits that will probably determine this are partly is your organization really absurdly paranoid about like having eight different levels of security of who can do what and see what and edit what? If so, MediaWiki is a bad fit. Um, what are the people in your organization currently using and are there reasonable import tools to get that into MediaWiki? Um, and do you personally, or, or is there someone else at the organization who feels really strongly about one way or the other? Because in my experience, like if someone really wants them, everybody to be using Confluence, they might win. Um, and if someone really wants some, us to be using MediaWiki, then you might win, you know, if there's only one person who feels strongly. Um, and then there's the bootstrapping kind of question of how do you, you believe, now the fact that you are part of the Wikimedia community and that you're here, probably means that you are discounting your own tech savviness. Like, remember, don't compare yourself to, like, our senior developers and the people who started MediaWiki. Compare yourself to the 8 billion people on Earth who do not know a single word that any of us are saying, you know? And um, the, you are tech savvy. You are here. So it's just a matter of getting the information that you need, assimilating it, and thinking, really, like fi figuring out what your questions are. Because once you know what your questions are and you know what some of your resources are, uh, which include the uh, MediaWiki.org website, the Wikimedia developers mailing list, which is called Wikitech L. You can lurk on that for a little while. There's a MediaWiki administrators and users mailing list, which might be more suitable for some of your questions. That's called MediaWiki L. Um, and there's a hash MediaWiki IRC channel. Um, I am happy to show someone where any of these are, but they're all linked to from the MediaWiki.org website. Um, and so deciding and figuring out what some of your questions are, what your situation is, what your technical infrastructure is at your organization, um, and then just using those resources and feeling, feel brave you know, about asking questions about what, um, what your needs might be. And then and you'll learn. And then guess what? Two weeks from now, you'll be even more tech savvy than you are now. Uh, I'm happy to talk with you more about this stuff afterwards as well. Thanks. Um, just want to go back to the, the API question for a second mm -hmm. uh, and just kind of dig a little deeper into kind of a dumb question on this. So I, 
I work uh, more on the government side of things. Mm -hmm. And so often, the last number of years, open data has been a big issue and talk about putting information out in, or data out in machine readable formats. Mm -hmm. So, and increasingly, I hear now talking about putting government data out through APIs. So, what I wanted just some clarification on is an API, how is it different or is it the same about putting data out in machine readable formats? And the second part of that question is are all APIs the same? Is there a common API language or are there different types of APIs that can't talk to each other? Okay, so uh, we are straying a little bit from uh, my strength of talking about Wikimedia specific engineering. I say it's my strength because it's where I generally know more than other people. Um, so it's like relative strength. Uh, so, but uh, to answer briefly and attempting to stay accurate, so like those go together because the less I say, the less wrong I can be, I think. Um, generally, when you hear people talking about making data available in a machine readable format, there's one of two things they're talking about. Either they're talking about making things available via an API, or they're talking about creating great giant files that are like giant spreadsheets and making them available for other people to download. The Wikimedia Foundation, in its wisdom, does both. You know, I mean, you can access the Wikimedia sites via an API. You can also go to dumps.wikimedia.org and just download terabytes and terabytes of basically spreadsheets full of the Wikimedia project data, content, code, everything. Um, now, to your second question, um, there are different formats that people will write data in. Like, uh, there's some that's a lot like stuff you've seen, uh, like, HTML, it's very close to HTML. Uh, and then there's some that you will look at and you're like, what is this crazy moon language? Um, I think that, uh, like, the, the utter simplification is that thinking of, quote, APIs talking to each other is kind of approaching the, the wrong paradigm. But I think that would get a little bit too much into where we should probably have like an interactive discussion so we can talk a little bit more later. Okay. Go ahead. And Greg, how much time do we have? Okay, go ahead. Okay, so I wanted to to ask you, from your description of designers, which was really, really big, um, my understanding was that uh, in the foundation, the what's generally known as software architects also get in this huge designer category. Is that correct, or did I misunderstood? Okay, so... There is a title which a few people have at the Wikimedia Foundation. Sorry, I'm just giving background for people who don't know. Um, there is a title that a few people at the foundation have, which is architect, um, like lead software architect, lead platform architect, lead operations architect. Um, at different places, this might mean different things. What that generally means at the Wikimedia Foundation is that this is a hella expert person, that's a technical term, um, who has the responsibility to kind of go like this and be a visionary. <laughs> um, and to uh, kind of shepherd and have responsibility for that entire technical system on the technical end of things, this is not about like user facing, how would the user feel, what do users want kind of stuff. This is, as we use it, the people, Brian Vibber, Tim Starling, and Mark Bergsma, who are the people who have these architect titles, are much more having responsibility for thinking about uh, the uh, infrastructure and back end stuff on a long term and large scale level. Um, so it doesn't have that much overlap with design, but I understand why you might have asked that. All right, I think we have time for one or two more questions. I'm also happy, by the way, I realize that this kind of large group mode, you might be embarrassed to ask some questions, so I'm happy to also answer stuff one-on-one -on -one later. I'm also happy to repeat this as an unconference session tomorrow if people want, because I know that um, that might be better for some people.
I wasn't here in the beginning, so I don't really know how the questions have been going. But I hear you talking about, you know, the software development and the architects and all that. How do you feel like a wiki, having a wiki at a software company could kind of work with the release cycle and sprints and things of that nature? You know, how do you, how do you see it grooving into that software cycle? I, um, every single firm, every single organization, uh, company, nonprofit, loose group of friends, whatever, that makes software together does it differently. Um, some are really, really like militarily exact in what their criteria are, how often they release, who works on what, and so on. Some are more like us, a bit more amoeba-esque sometimes. And I think that uh, tools affect how we work and tools also have to fit how we work. So if you are at an organization that has a software development process um, that is kind of in, where people already use wikis and are comfortable using wikis, um, and you are looking for, uh, and, and, and in your experience, people like to structure things using wikis, then using a wiki for this additional thing might also help. Um, however, there are a lot of places where it just isn't a good enough fit. Also, there are other, I mean, one has to think about this in comparison to other tools. There are a lot of tools that exist to help coordinate software development, including sprints and releases and stuff like that. I'm fairly sure they all suck terribly. However, some of their suckages might be in places you don't notice as much because that's just not how your team works. So uh, it, uh, it really depends a lot on, on what your team cares about. If you have a lot of people who um, are, not, are, are astonishingly lazy unless they have a form to fill out, you know, then MediaWiki doesn't really have built-in forms for helping you plan this stuff. So you might want to consider something like track. Um, but yeah, this is extremely dependent on uh, your org, what the people in it are like, and the luck of the dice. Uh, I am unfortunately a bit of a cynic on this. I have time for, I think, one more question. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I have no idea if this is a, an extremely general question, but I'm involved in the digital humanities, which is basically about uh, helping people in social sciences and humanities, academics mostly, uh, learn to interact, uh, well, learn to manipulate the digital data that they have. And a lot of the, uh, recommend well, the main recommendation that we always get uh, the first time is you have to learn XML. And okay, I've been listening to that, I've, I've been doing that. And, uh, but I'm, I'm wondering if uh, this is, um, I suppose I know XML, and, but I would also like to do more with uh, MediaWiki. Right. What, what, uh, what, if I have this knowledge of XML, but absolutely no other programming uh, knowledge of anything, uh, anything whatsoever, what can I do with MediaWiki? Will it help me understand better, or? I'm sorry. It, you know, it's fine. It's fine. You, uh, I am glad that you, as a social scientist, are interested in using tools to you know, become a cyborg. Um, a cyborg social scientist, there could be a comic about you. Um, so uh, what, what, two things. One is that in general, scientists who want to learn more about how to use software in their work should visit the Software Carpentry website which Greg Wilson runs, which is a fantastic set of little three minute tutorials on how to get started using a bunch of different little tools that will just amazingly magnify your effectiveness at collecting data, dealing with data, analyzing data, et cetera. Another is, um, I know that there are people who have a lot of information as scientists, as researchers, and are trying to figure out ways to organize their collection of, you know, bibliographies and uh, information of various kinds. And I, I do know some people find, like, if you're just doing a personal research project, then those bookmark looks like Zotero are what some people use. But instead of just, sorry? Oh, uh, but instead of just keeping stuff by yourself, you know, organizing the information that you collect on a wiki that a lot of other people can access, a publicly accessible wiki, 
uh, might be helpful uh, to you. Um, I believe uh, Roan said that uh, using MediaWiki for your own personal to-do list or something like that is trying to uh, uh, mow your lawn with a tank. Daniel Kinsler. Oh, it was Daniel Kinsler who said that. All right. Um, just it's my, my speech is a wiki. Just edit it so I said the right thing. Um, so that's one, that is an option. Um, I do want to point out that, I, just as I was saying to her, like I don't want to be a person who's like, here's your hammer, now everything looks like a nail. You know, examining your own needs and trying out different kinds of tools to figure out what might be helping you with different parts of your needs is going to be helpful. So for example, my partner, while writing a science fiction book, had a whole bunch of um, kind of backstory that he needed to keep somewhere but not actually put into the written text. And so he used a different wiki called TiddlyWiki, which is, it's JavaScript, it just runs in your browser, it's extremely fast, and you don't need to like set up a server and stuff for it. Um, and that was helpful for him to just have like a little hyperlinked wiki with all this backstory that he could keep so he could refer to it when he was writing. So, you know, for him, a different wiki was useful and was a solution. Um, fortunately, I don't work someplace where I'm going to get fired for recommending an alternative wiki. <laughs> so, uh, is that helpful? All right. Thank you all. Please join me in a round of applause. Thank you. All right. Um, welcome, everybody, and thank you for showing up. Um, this talk is about a project called Resource Loader 2, which is what we originally named the project when we started it. Of course, that turned out to be the worst name possible. Um, a better name that we have sort of been throwing around is Gadgets 2.0, and then the terms sort of get confused. So basically, what we're going to be talking about are a thing called gadgets. And that means it is appropriate to introduce the audience what gadgets are. If you are an experienced Wikipedia editor, then um, you might want to zone out for the next four minutes or so. Um, so gadgets are additional functionality um, on the wiki that are created, like programmed, by users in JavaScript and CSS. And the users can do that because the code, the JavaScript and CSS code, actually lives on wiki pages um, on the wiki. Um, and there is a special page called Special Gadgets where all the gadgets are listed. And if you go to your preferences in the wiki, then there will be a gadgets tab over to the right um, that lists all the gadgets that people on that wiki have made for your enjoyment. Um, so the gadgets um, infrastructure was written in 2007 by uh, Daniel Kinsler, the same person that was just credited for the mowing your lawn with a tank joke. Um, and it's really not been touched since. So um, I'm going to go through, I'm basically going to go through the basic workflow of uh, creating and maintaining and enabling gadgets and explain what's wrong with it and why we decided to embark on this project because these issues have been apparent for a while um, for you know in the for most of the four five year lifetime of this pro of this uh, infrastructure and they haven't really been addressed yet so let's talk about creating and editing scripts which is what you would be doing as a developer um, you would have to create and edit um, .js pages in the MediaWiki namespace. So this is cool because your JavaScript can live in a wiki page and you know you don't need a developer to deploy your code to the site. This is awesome and this is the reason why, Gadget, why Daniel wrote this extension and why it empowered local users to do things that the Wikimedia Foundation didn't have the time or money to support. So that's all very awesome and it's produced some, um, it's produced some great gadgets. However, you do need, come on, click. However, you do need uh, to be an administrator to edit those pages, which is sort of a social problem because it, you know, it, it raises the barrier to entry and it requires that local communities trust, you know, those scary programmers to like, you know, have full administrator access and be able to block people and, you know, you don't know what they're going to do. Um, this has worked fairly well in practice. Because you know we obviously, you know obviously there's a bunch of cool gadgets out there, and obviously the community. Um, what? Sorry, yes, there's a question. Yeah, you, you've used the word gadget several times, and you said they're extra functionality. Could you give an example of what a gadget is? 
so the question was, can I give an example of what extra functionality a gadget might provide? So um, if you've been on Wikipedia, you might be familiar with things like um, Hotcat, which um, is a better interface, is like an improved interface um, for adding or removing categories to an article. Uh, there is a gadget called Twinkle, which you may have heard about in other talks, that um, automa automates the process of like marking pages for deletion, where you have to like add it's like 12 different queues and you know notify their user and their talk page, etc. Um, uh, a more a recent example is, for example, on English Wikipedia, there is the My Sandbox link. You might have seen it. Um, basically, gadgets don't really have a limit in what they can do. Um, gadgets are just per, uh, an interface for users, for Wikipedia users to write JavaScript and CSS. So basically anything you can program in regular JavaScript and CSS, you can do in a gadget. So you could implement like uh, all of the world basically in JavaScript if you want to. Uh, there is no limitation in terms of what you can do. We, we provide certain utilities to make separate tasks uh, very easy, like providing a portlet link to the user interface. We have a special utility for that. But um, in practice, there is no limitation to what uh, Wikipedia users can do with gadgets, uh, which is great. All right. So um, as I was saying, um, the as I was saying before on the previous slide, um, the community has you know given out administrative access to gadget developers so they can do their work, and obviously this has worked because I am able to tell you about Hotcat and Twinkle because those things exist. Um, but it is, you know, it is a barrier to entry if you're, um, if you're interested in dabbling with, with code and you have to, like, you know, um, like, go through this process of becoming an administrator and, and all that stuff. Or getting an administrator to do stuff for you, which is even more annoying because that person, you know, might stop responding to you or go on vacation and then you have a problem. Yes, so the... The gentleman in the audience makes a valid point. You can technically write code elsewhere and then present it to an administrator as a finished project product and get them to put it up. But again, that requires that you go that you work through someone else and every time you're, you're you know, like fixing a bug or making an update, you have to go through that other person and it's um that's sort of frustrating. And that also brings up a very important point. Uh, because it actually the limitation goes both ways, uh which you may imagine um, in a way, you have to go for an administrator, but there's also a different perspective to the story in that uh, many of the administrators don't know how to program, don't have to know how to program, because they're wiki administrators. There's no need for them to know how to write JavaScript, which uh, causes many situations where a very capable programmer does not have an administrator right and has to present it to a non-programmer, who then either blindly agrees it or will reject it, uh, and that can cause, of course, security issues if, like, you know, there's, there, there have been some issues where administrators was asked to push something and I don't accept it or not, but, you know, so that can bring other issues. But we are addressing this in a second version, so we'll come to back, that, back to that later. Yeah, so in the interest of time, let's move on to uh, management, which is another task that the administrators perform is actually managing the list of gadgets that exist and which JavaScript file, CSS files they correspond to. It's not a very interesting job. Um, but it is a very difficult job. Um, we, um, we store these things in a special media wiki page called Gadget Definition, which has a list with, you know, with wiki text list syntax of all the gadgets that exist. Um, and the way that you add or remove a gadget from the wiki is you add or remove a, an item in this list. Um, the resulting syntax is um, worse than wiki text. And it looks like this. This is terrible. I mean, we're working on a visual editor because um, Wikitext is terrible, but I think this is worse. Can I make a comment? This really doesn't have. Oh, hold on, just a sec. Otherwise, I'll be off from here. Yeah. I mean, this really doesn't have to be edited a lot, right? Like uh, once, and by somebody who probably knows his way around, right? Unlike the visual editor stuff where you have. It's uh, true. This is not frequently edited. But um, it, it does. It, it does again. I mean, it's it's more difficult than it needs to be. And it's not just when creating or removing it. Um, it actually contains lots of information, like which user groups are allowed to use it, which kins it supports, which files it contains, um, and the dependencies as well. So whenever modules expanded, it'll have to be modified again. I'm just not sure. Is it really more difficult than JavaScript? What is more difficult than JavaScript? This one. 
Um, I may or may not be, but um, basically what we're saying is that this is much more difficult than it needs to be. And a uh, very important point simple. again is that it's not the JavaScript developer editing this in most cases. It is the administrator that has to push it, which may or may not be a JavaScript developer. So there's that. Another problem um, is translations because gadgets are user interface elements just like everything else, or that's what they aspire to be. Um, so they should be translatable. Um, the the software that was developed in 2007 and made gadgets possible in the first place didn't really address this issue at all. So there is no, there is currently nothing that MediaWiki or the Gadgets extension provides to enable you to translate your gadget. So of course, what happens in these cases is, you know, there is no solution. So the community will pack something together and decide on something. Basically, the um, ad hoc solution that is commonly used is you put all the translations in the code in a huge map that looks like this. And now your translations and your code are mixed. And it's sort of nightmarish. So the, the problem, again, is that the, the handling for localization is not native. You have to re-implement it in every gadget. It's sort of, it's sort of a nightmare. So you know, obviously it would be much better if MediaWiki just supported this. Um, another problem is is sharing gadgets because things like Hotcat, um, I believe Hotcat was originally developed on Commons because Commons uses categorization a lot more than any other wiki. But other wikis also use categorization and they also want to use Hotcat. So, um, so certain gadgets get popular enough that they're, you know, they're invented on one wiki but then they sort of make their way through the entire wiki sphere and everyone sort of wants them. Um, and the problem is there is no natively supported way to actually get another, a gadget from another wiki. So of course, Q community workarounds. Um, the, the most common community workaround is to write a script that loads another script that possibly loads another script that eventually ends up loading the gadget from the other domain somehow. Either that or they um, use the export import feature to copy the gadget to the uh, other wiki or they could if the export input feature actually worked properly. Um, but it involves a lot of manual labor and in the case of copy pasting code, you actually get problems with um, things getting out of sync. Um, so this is the, um, on the left is the canonical copy of Hotcat on Commons. On the right is what Dutch Wikipedia used to have not very long ago. It was nine versions behind. And you know, if you go on Russian Wikipedia, I think they have version 2.1. It's it's all over the place, and different wikis have copy pasted versions at different points in time. They don't maintain them, so it's just this huge mess. And if you fix a bug in Hotcat on Commons, it might take years before it's actually fixed everywhere. Um, so in short, what we're saying is the current the current gadgets ecosystem, while it has empowered a lot of people to do cool things. It also, it's also sort of frustrating and laborious for people to work with, um, and we think we can do better. So um, we embarked on a project to make things better, and Timo is going to tell you how we're making things better. So uh, now to talk a little bit about uh, the future of Gadgets 2.0. It's not that far in the future. We've already made a lot of progress on this. Uh, so we've updated the slides a little bit. Um, so very quickly, um, there's other documentation about this and other talks that we've given. But to quickly summarize uh, what Research Loader is, which is basically the main feature that enabled um, all these new features that we are going to implement in uh, the second version of the gadget extension. Um, so the main focus of Research Loader is to focus on the front-end performance of uh, the user. So it does a lot of uh, packaging of JavaScript files. It does minification, concatenation, um, several uh, utility features such as right-to-left flipping for uh, right-to-left languages, um, embedding of images into the style sheets. Um, it does a lot of efficient localization handling. Um, it provides a lot of uh, out-of-the-box modules. Um, uh, the default modules are the most commonly used modules, jQuery and MediaWiki.js. Um, uh, there's a little poll here. Who near knows about jQuery? All right, lots of hands, great. So that's now default available in uh, the entire gadget uh, environment. Uh, and the MediaWiki.js library uh, contains things like getting the current page title, getting the current namespace, um, dealing with uh, localization of messages, uh, variable replacements. So to give a very quick um, 
example of that. Oh, actually, before we do that, uh, another new feature that's actually added in our second version of Resource Loader is the ability to load Resource Loader modules from different sources. Uh, so this allows, for example, um, a module to be defined, in this case the module is a gadget, uh, to be defined on one wiki and to load it natively uh, without having to cache it or copy it or import it from any other wiki. Um, so here's a small code example of what we could do with MediaWiki and jQuery uh, in a gadget. And in this example, we're creating uh, a div element, adding a uh, given ID, and then using the message interface from resource loader to give it a message uh, that is localized in the user's language. And then we're using jQuery again to bind an event and do some effects. So to move on to the next part that we've improved in uh, Gadget Supernova is the editing uh, ability. Um, uh, the, the first um, blocker really in the editing interface is that the fact that it's in the MediaWiki namespace. Uh, and as you may know, the MediaWiki namespace is originally intended and still is for interface messages and not for storing JavaScript files or CSS. Uh, so uh, the first thing we did is move it to, the, to a standalone namespace, the gadget namespace. Um, what this enables is for one, to, for the edit interface uh, user right again to become what it should be to edit the user interface messages uh, without risking cross-site scripting attacks or giving other uh, in inappropriate responsibilities to those users, uh, which they may not want to deal with. Uh, and it allows us to separate the user rights from the other perspective, which is to give users the, the right to edit gadgets without them requiring to be a wiki administrator by giving them access to the MediaWiki namespace. So this will benefit both groups. Administrators will no longer have this burden, and developers can uh, get the rights that they really want to without um, having to go through a process of are you, am I allowed, am I trusted enough to block users, which you know, is not really related in practice. Um, the next subject is management. We've also improved that a lot. Um, the gadget definition syntax page uh, will be deprecated entirely and uh, imported into the uh, renewed spe uh, special gadgets page. Um, this will all be done automatically once we upgrade, so there's no need to manually import or uh, fix anything. As soon as the upgrade happens, this will all be imported into the new environment. And the definition pages also get their own namespace so that every gadget has um, a fixed set of pages that contain everything about the gadget without having to manually copy like this one line of the definition page to the, to the new wiki. So if you uh, export the gadget pages, the JavaScript CSS pages, and the definition manifest, then you have everything that the gadget contains. And of course, any interface messages that may be used inside the gadget. Uh, and again, this has separate namespace from the MediaWiki namespace, so it allows management separate from uh, wiki administration. There is a quick uh, preview I want to show you uh, of uh, this new special page. Uh, it's still a work in progress. The design is still under consideration, but this is a, a, a general preview of what it will be like. Uh, so we have, still have the same uh, ca categorization of the different gadgets, but except of edit, instead of um, editing a fairly complicated syntax, there's now more visual editor uh, interface for it. So the actual um, interface for the in, um, editing the individual manifest uh, also has been improved. So this is basically the visualization of the gadget definition namespace. So every property uh, has its own form field, fairly easy to use. And everything has auto completion, so you can't um, define a gadget with something that doesn't exist. You can't make it depend on an inexisting user write or an inexisting script page uh, or something like that. So the next part is localization. Um, because of resource loader, which has localization built in, and we are enforcing resource loader throughout the gadget extension, this is now n native available. Every module has a message property, which allows it to give an array of message keys that it uh, needs to load and then are available in the gadget environment that it creates. It uses the MediaWiki core localization framework, so all the fallbacks, all the parsing, all the um, concatenation, everything that uh, MediaWiki core does with a message is now available in Resource Loader. There's a few things still coming up, such as parsing complicated wiki text that is currently not available um, in the client. But it may be, you can always use it through the API uh, if that's necessary. But uh, the most common things are now completely native in the client. It's easily accessible through MW message, just like some of you may have already done in, uh, in an extension or in MediaWiki core. And like I said, basic parsing is available, so dollar replacements, uh, magic variables, plural parsing. Uh, is all available. And recently added by the localization team is the grammar magic um, function is now also available. So again, a very quick example of what it might look like. 
Um, there is a localization message uh, in the MediaWiki namespace. That is still in the MediaWiki namespace because it belongs there. Localization messages belong there. Um, it has, uh, again, the dollar sign, and then in the JavaScript, we will replace it with the current user's username. And that will work as it is. Um, the next topic is using other modules. So again, we're using Resource Loader, which has uh, an a, a entire de dependency framework. So a gadget can use other modules, and since modules, since a gadget is a module, you can also use other gadgets. So one of the things uh, we expect users to do is that they can create a jQuery mod, they can create a jQuery plugin inside a wiki without having it to be in MidWiki core, and then can use that jQuery plugin in other gadgets. Um, and it's also uh, possible to have a gadget that is of the kind hidden. We're not exactly sure if that's the exact property name we will use but it'll allow one to create a gadget that's not directly available to the user, but only to be used in other gadgets, like an abstract gadget or an interface plugin, or in this case, a jQuery plugin. So it uses the dependency framework of resource loader. Again, a very quick example. Um, one of the most popular modules we're using um, is the MediaWiki title. It allows uh, one to parse the title and get the different properties that are related to it. So you, one can reuse this in, in lots of different gadgets. Um, lastly, the, the duplication part is also solved, so we're now sharing through the cross-wiki loading principle of resource loader, instead of exporting, importing, copying, pasting, anything like that. The editor has a checkbox, share gadget, and once enabled, it uh, makes this gadget available as a repository inside this, uh, inside this wiki on any other wiki that uses the, ori the origin wiki as a repository. So um, imagine in this wiki we have um, the shared gadgets, and then the gadget will be available uh, in there. We're running a little short on time, so we're not going to do a demo, but I'll point to where uh, more information can be found of the current progress and the demo that we have so far. Uh, are there any questions? We've got time for one or two questions. I will just quickly point out that there is actually um, a Labs VM that has a demo of this running and it is linked from the URL over there. Okay, hi, so I'm Yishen Miao from Chinese Wikipedia. I remember the last time uh, upgrading related to resource loader is actually somehow horrible on Chinese Wikipedia, which the admins rewent the upgrade three times a day. So how smooth this time this upgrade will be? Resource loader, well, you're talking about the introduction of resource loader, I assume, about a year ago, maybe. Yeah, that time is way yes. really when that, that, that broke a lot of uh, user scripts um, because of some changes that we made. This is uh, a much less radical change. Mm -hmm. um, the changes that we needed to make for this in, in resource loader itself um, have already gone live because we've already made them and they haven't broken anything. Um, the only thing that we'll be touching when we deploy this um, is the gadgets extension itself. Um, so the only thing that we could possibly break is gadgets, and the the only thing that we reasonably expect might break are gadgets that do not currently work well with Resource Loader. Um, I think, unfortunately, um, things like Twinkle and Nav pop-ups might be in that category, so uh, we might need Twinkle to address is, that problem. Twinkle is compatible. Okay. Nav pop-ups is a work in progress, but that's um, a longer story. Oh, yeah, yeah. We should definitely not get out now. Um, but yeah, uh, did this, anything currently compatible with Resource Loader will continue to work. This is more adding abilities to the gadget extension. The existing scripts will not really be changed in any way. So if the previous upgrade didn't fix, uh, didn't break anything, then this will not break anything. Uh, we've we've got lots of unit tests for that, or we will have those. So yeah, this is provided that the gadget is actually loaded via resource loader, which is, you may you might see the bracket resource loader bracket annotation in the gadgets definition for some yeah. gadgets. If the gadget has that, and it still works, then it will not break. Okay, great. And if it does, then I'm going to have to stay up all night to fix your wiki. Mm -hmm. well, so well, what I really recommend you to do is, if you are a gadget developer, add the bracket resource loader no, uh, annotation to your gadget today, or soon, and that's basically, if it works then, then it will continue to work in the new version. So that's how you can verify that it still works. And if it doesn't work, we have the migration guide, uh, MediaWiki.org, which tells you what the most likely cause is. It's usually a very small fix uh, that just needs to be uh, modified in the gadget code, and then it will continue to work. Any other questions? Right. Okay. Last question. 
Uh, what about additional appeal like adding buttons to editor, etc.? Because different media wikis has different mechanism uh, like to edit uh, one more button to user panel. To add one more button to the what, sorry? Uh, what about new IP, uh, application programming interface like more plugins points for gadgets? Like uh, gadget, uh, the only thing gadget is doing is doing something in editor and he need it need a new button in editor panel. Yeah. And in different uh, wikis, there is a different mechanisms for adding such buttons. And the gadgets are just going broken because of this. Uh, what about such well, things? Our, our, so the wiki editor extension, um, I am assuming you're, at, you're referring to adding a button to the edit toolbar? Uh, there is an API for that in the wiki editor. Not supposed to be. It's, this is not, we're not changing any of that. Yeah, um, so I, I will just quickly say, because we're running out of time, that while this may be a practical problem, that is also related to gadgets, it is not within the scope of this project. So it is not, in the, not within the class of project problems that we are tackling. Um, if you're having issues with things behaving differently on the different wikis, that should not happen, that is a problem. Uh, please come talk to us later after this talk. All right, let's give them a uh, round of applause. All right. Uh, so my name is uh, Greg Varnum, and uh, I go... Oh, that's okay. And I go uh, uh, online by uh, Varnant, and I'm going to talk a little bit about, well, hopefully talk a lot about, uh, MediaWiki extensions, what they are, how we use them, why we love them, a little bit about uh, the types that there are, a tiny bit about the development process, and then uh, some information on a project that helps educate developers about extensions, uh, unified develop or extension developers, and uh, some other goodies that that's, uh, that's happening there. Out of curiosity, raise your hand if you you've ever uh, developed a, a MediaWiki extension. I'm just kind of curious. Oh, wow. Very cool. Okay. Well, so for some of you, this the beginning pieces here may be slightly redundant, uh, and I apologize, but the name of the workshop was, you know, what are they? So extensions are uh, customizations to how MediaWiki looks and works. Um, oftentimes when you download the MediaWiki software, probably one of the biggest comments or, or requests that we get is how do we make it do that thing that Commons does, or how do we get it to do that thing that English Wikipedia does? So English Wikipedia uses around 50 different uh, extensions of different types to do all of the various things that we ask it to do uh, above and beyond the original capabilities of MediaWiki. So that includes includes the uh, collections extension, which allows you to create books within Wikipedia and then uh, export them into PDFs. That's an extension. Um, the way that most of our templates are displayed is controlled by an extension. Earlier, we were talking about the issue of spam and, and CAPTCHA. Uh, the management and the prevention of those is often done via extensions. So basically, anything that is above and beyond the basic features of MediaWiki, uh, we generally do via uh, extensions and the gadgets is an actually another example the the underlying code in a, on top of resource loader that they were just talking about is also an extension there's some different types and tools that we utilize in extension. These are the, the six basic ones. I'm going to go over them uh, each real quick. Um, tag extensions extend the built-in wiki markup and allow for real basic use of code like donation. So if you've created a very specific kind of donation box that you want to appear uh, on, a, on a page, just some particular pages, you can create an extension that calls up that code anytime uh, that particular tag is used uh, within a page. Something similar to that um, are parsers, which take that concept, but it's a more advanced usage, so you can add a lot more to them. Uh, you can utilize them within templates. Um, they also allow for support of localization. They're a much more complex uh, version of that concept. Hooks allow custom code to be executed when a very particular event takes place. So for example, um, there's uh, one out there that when you save an article, it sends a tweet out to Twitter. Um, so that's kind of an example of, of an implementation of an action. And it uses hooks. Hooks are what is telling it what that action is so we can create additional hooks. Does that kind of make sense? Hooks is the one I always have the hardest time explaining to people. <laughs> okay. Um, and then we can also add additional special pages. So I think we're all used to the idea of special pages. This is how we can do so. The gadgets, 
gadgets extension, for example, creates the gadget special page. So as you could probably tell, most extensions wind up falling into multiple categories to get done what they want to get done. And again, gadgets would be a good example of that. Um, but that's something that using extensions you're able to do. So that also allows you, if you want to have a, a special page that uses the API to call, or the database to call a very particular type of pages, all pages over X size, um, there's abilities to do that. And then skins, you know, generally what we sometimes call as themes, same slight concept, but not exactly. Um, you can create unique skins to change the look and the feel of MediaWiki, and you can also create extensions that aid you in changing the look and feel of MediaWiki extensions. Uh, and then finally, my personal favorite type of, of them are magic words, which is a technique for mapping wiki text strings to a single ID associated with a function. I know that's like the most confusing explanation, but um, it essentially means it, it's sort of the concept of, of variables and parser functions. That allows you to do, again, sort of complicated things using standard wiki code that can then call in much more advanced code. Does that make sense? Okay, so those are the basic types. And generally, I want to talk a little bit about um, how these get developed and how we support them and how we promote them. Generally, uh, extensions either come up for one or two reasons. One, somebody wants to do something very specific within the media, within the Wikimedia projects, or two, they're running a third-party wiki and they have a very particular thing that they would like to get done, such as um, adding a share toolbar so that they can allow for likes and tweets and things like that to be sent, or uh, other things that we, for various reasons, don't do on English Wikipedia, for example. So these are often, actually almost all extensions are developed by volunteers. Tiers. So they will generally go to MediaWiki.org. There's a lot of tutorials there in the developer hub over how to develop extensions, what the types of extensions are, uh, some sample code. Then you generally need to sign up for a Garrett account on Labs. Get Garrett without getting into too much depth, um, is the software that we utilize to track versions of code, as well as to detect bugs, leave comments for other developers. Um, so it's our code repository. It's where you go to place your code so that other developers can see it. So you need to get an account um, to set that up. Usually what I recommend to folks is that they also utilize all the communication tools that we have for developers, specifically the mailing lists and the IRC channels are usually very well populated with uh, developers who are very skilled and very, well, usually polite in responding to, re to requests and comments and offering assistance. But even when they're not always using great tact, they have great intentions of wanting you to build a really, really wonderful extension. So it's helpful uh, to do some things there. What I usually wind up doing as well is finding some extensions that are perhaps doing something similar. And I think we all know the expression of, you know, a good artist borrows, a great artist steals. Same kind of concept. Um, and a part of that is that once you develop the extension, you technically can house it theoretically wherever you would like. However, what we highly, highly encourage people to do is, again, to house it within the Git Garrett repository that we can utilize all across Wikimedia, and then to post information about your extension on MediaWiki.org. Um, and on MediaWiki.org, there's a very specific uh, set of instructions that you can utilize. There's a template. It allows you to categorize. Um, so there's a, you can put in a description. This is what my extension does. Here's a logo that I've created for my extension. You and it displays in an info box. This is how you install it. This is how you customize it. And leave some comments here so I can develop it in the future. Some folks will choose to post their code on the wiki page. And we really, f I don't want to say frown on, but it's not a good idea. Um, and if you ever are looking at an extension that posts its code on the wiki page, it's kind of a you're sort of taking a risk, in my personal opinion. Um, if it's not in the code repository, most developers are never going to see it. So they're not going to find the bugs. They're not going to find the thing that crashes the entire wiki when we upgrade it to 1.20 or whatever the case may be. So it's really, really important to make sure that you have a, a good understanding um, of the code repository and that you utilize your media wiki page uh, correctly and not put the code up there. And actually, if you do put your code up there, inevitably someone's going to come along 
and tag it with this nice little warning that says, for the love of God, really? You've put your code in the wiki? Please don't do this anymore. And um, it also is conceivable. You are agreeing that once you put it up on MediaWiki.org, you're offering it to the community. MediaWiki is an open source project. You can try to restrict your extension by using uh, you know, copyright license. I don't recommend it. I, it. My experience is it generally doesn't work. You really want to use an open open license, and that's how you're going to get the best feedback. And to be honest, there's not any, in my opinion, personal reason usually not to. You want other people helping you. If you're trying to make money off your extension, that's a whole other complicated arena, but we're not going to go down that road. Um, so you do want to make sure that it's all up there, available, and open source. But that also means that other people may take your extension and really evolve it in a new direction. Um, so you do want to kind of stay active on the extension page, keep an eye on what people are talking about. I will also warn you that uh, because of what this next slide is, um, there is something of a concentrated effort to try to improve extension wiki pages. And a part of that may wind up being uh, wiki code being taken off those pages and just uploaded to the repository and tweaked and, and hopefully reviewed before before that happens. Um, so just know that when you're putting it up on MediaWiki, you are consenting to this, to submitting it to a community project. Um, and while you can put a message up saying, you know, please don't edit this extension without talking to me first, you know, it, it's at your own risk. Uh, but I do really, really want to encourage people to use um, the MediaWiki.org site. So this is a, a project um, that is now on MediaWiki.org that is for developers of extensions as well as for people who are specifically trying to uh, support extension developers. So you can join this and then um, on there are tips, templates that help for creating wiki pages. Uh, we're right now doing a page drive where we're reviewing all of the existing pages for extensions and trying to figure out which ones are missing tags because they've got wiki code, which ones don't work anymore and probably should be warning people this extension no longer works with the active version of MediaWiki. Um, trying to make that information a lot more helpful. We also want to make sure that one of the comments I hear a lot from system administrators is, you know, I downloaded this extension, it worked with 1.17 and now it doesn't work with 1.20 and then they like keep that information all to themselves. No one else ever finds out. It's a wiki. So be bold. If you download extensions, you know, there's a lot of information on this uh, project and what you can do to that page to help other system administrators not go through the repetitive hassle you just went through of downloading it, installing it, learning it doesn't work, and being disappointed. It's a letdown. Nobody wants that. You can also be bold, go through, find a fix to the code, and then create, this is kind of getting geeky. If you're not a developer, I apologize. But you can create a branch of it um, and then have a specific version that says, OK, well, that extension worked great up until 1.17. But now, this is the branch for 1.18 and beyond. And generally, that's kind of preferred rather than keeping your extension backwards compatible forever. That's nice. Um, but as we got, have, we've gotten really improved particularly with resource loader, it becomes very, very difficult to support, I guess, pre-0.16, 0.17 uh, wikis uh, and having it supported after that. So there's often kind of a split in some massive versions when we release resource loader or something like that. Um, Okay, so I did want to give a chance for folks to ask questions as well as share uh, some tips and whatnot with each other. So were there, before we get into any tip sharing or idea sharing, uh, were there any very specific questions? I know we went through this fast, but yeah. I actually have a better explanation for folks. Oh, great. Thank God. <laughs> Here, let me, uh, let me hand you the mic. Yeah, we have that from the, oh, I should also point out real quick. Um, one of the biggest, if, if you've ever used Bugzilla, you know, you've heard of Bug1, right? The infamous Bug1, which is documentation needs to be improved. Um, the hook description was taken from documentation, so we will perhaps improve the documentation with this new definition. Everybody likes metaphors and analogies, correct? All right, well, too bad. <laughs> That's what I've got for you. So imagine that you are walking into each of these rooms here at Wikimania, and there is a list next to the door with phone numbers on it. All right, when you, before you walk into the room, you have to call each of those phone numbers and ask these people what you, they want you to do, and you have to do those things. MediaWiki, the software, is you. The people on the other side of the phone are the extensions that have hooked into it. So before, you are a, before MediaWiki is able to take an action, it uh, looks through its list of hooks for that specific action and calls upon the extensions to do their thing first. And generally, there's a hook for 
almost every action. I mean, I have, I mean I'm at a loss of what actions we don't have hooks for I've anymore. never seen one that you right. don't have a hook for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so generally, there's a hook for just about everything. Anyone possibly, you know, create a user talk page, edit a user talk page, right? Sometimes there's a... F Exactly, like before they clicked the button, but when they clicked the button, it's one action, and then when it actually posts, it's another action. So there's a lot of really sophisticated ways that you can utilize the hooks uh, to time if you're really like me and you're kind of retentive with the word that goes before it that people may be offended by about how it's implemented and when it's implemented. That would be great. Thanks. Um, that, uh, uh, that definitely, uh, the hooks are great for that. And again, on the MediaWiki.org page, there's some uh, pages that list all of the different hooks. Again, I really want to encourage you as you're finding out, oh, this hook also does that, or this is a better description of the hook. There's no like master of documentation somewhere who's going to fix that for you. It, it's us. We have to go there and fix that. So um, documentation is probably the biggest, biggest thing where I'm personally pushing right now uh, on MediaWiki.org and all the extension developers in this room I know can help with that. Uh, next question. Stupendous. Okay, since there were some extension developers, do people have some, some tips or best practices or I developed an extension this one time and I wish I knew this before I developed it? You mentioned earlier uh, about an extension that worked with uh, tweeting and Twitter yeah. and all that whatever crap. Um, is there, so can you talk more about that and maybe the idea if, you know, connecting to a different, like a news feed, a different type of news feed, not just Twitter, can you tell more about that extension or your experience? Sure. Um, you know, the, the concept, there's an app for that, right? We've all seen the iPhone things, there's an app for that. Well, we're starting to get to a world where there's an extension for that, um, which is great. So there are extensions that can do some really sophisticated things like ping out um, to Google when updates are made. Um, there's one that unfortunately blightly works that sends messages to Facebook and has full integration into Facebook with login. Um, so there are a lot of extensions already out there that do uh, some pretty sophisticated and interesting things that really, for those of us who are running third-party um, wikis and really want to try to utilize uh, social media tools to get our message out there, there's essentially starting to be a, an extension developed for just about every major um, social media network out there. Um, and then we've got a couple of coveralls like Wikishare and add this uh, button and things like that. Um, so I think the best advice, oh, and I should, I guess, point out that um, if you go to the category extensions on MediaWiki.org, um, that also then has a matrix that sort of shows all of the active extensions. And then it's broken down reasonably well by categories. I actually think a lot of the extension pages are reasonably well categorized. Um, and they do have like a social media one. Does that answer your? OK, great. I want to add to that that um, if you see the very common thing of like, oh, MediaWiki.org seems to say there's like eight extensions that right. do this thing, ask on MediaWiki L. Right. Ask on the MediaWiki uh, users and administrators mailing list, and they'll be like, oh, this is the good one. And then go update the docs. Exactly. And another thing is, is you know, several months ago, we began adding language up there to let developers know that if a better version of your extension comes along, you may be absorbed or it may get merged. Um, so that's another opportunity to be bold, that if you see two extensions that duplicate the exact same thing, um, merging them together is not an unrealistic goal. Um, again, you want to be sensitive to the developer that originally created the extension, but once you put it out on MediaWiki, it's, it's community property. Uh, yeah, over here. So uh, something that as an extension developer I ran into, and this kind of has to do with uh, you guys as well here, uh, the documentation for resource loader is really, as far as extension developers, I don't know if, how good it is for gadgets, but for extension developers it is um, very lacking. Yeah. Um, uh, do, you, do you guys have, as the resource loader developers, have any plans to uh, improve that per chance? <laughs> yes, I'm getting it definitely here. Uh, they, they, they'll jointly answer. Right. This has been a topic in the last three weeks, and I spent a lot of time updating it, so maybe check it out again. I, I think you're mostly talking about more like PHP side documentation for resource load rather than JS side. Yes. Yeah. So Still. the JS side has probably improved a lot recently because of that guy. The PHP side hasn't improved much because of lack of time on part of this guy. So um, I, I guess I need to spend some time on that if I have time ever, but 
um, it we sh we definitely have to have better documentation on that, and and I apologize for it being lacking. Um, it's other other than 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 promise you that I hope to be able to spend some time on it. I'm not sure what else I can do, but soon I might. Yeah, like, do you want to have a sprint during unconference day tomorrow on this? You mean when I'm on a plane? When you're on a plane? Damn. Okay. <laughs> uh, something else that we've been trying to do lately through this project, although it got a little busy the last few months getting ready for Wikimania, is we do try to do some online trainings on things that extension developers are very uh, are running into challenges with, or if there's a big change between versions, um, we're trying to hold training sessions to prepare extension developers for what those big changes will be. Uh, so we are, I feel, getting better, and certainly Sumana's position has been helping with that tremendously um, and helping us keep the extension developers up to date. Uh, there, part of that, by the way, is there's also a new uh, email mailing list just about major announcements and changes. So if the usual wiki tech list is a little too traffic oriented and you just want to know, I develop extensions, I just want to know when my extension is going to break so it doesn't break, that, that's a reasonably good list as well. Uh, documentation is always appreciated, but always behind. I think I'd be much happier to see a Hello World extension that was a stub for each, every little piece that I could cannibalize and adapt and grow out from there. And that's actually, I'm, I'm really pleased you mentioned that. There is uh, an effort underway. Uh, I'm not a part of it, so I can't speak eloquently about it. Um, but there is an effort underway to put up some standardized extensions uh, on a code repository that you can download and use as like a starting point. So if there's a particular type of extension, uh, we're hoping to be able to do that. We're also hoping to try to improve and, and standardize the look of, of the uh, individual extension wiki pages, um, which is a big, if you wind up developing an extension, I do want to encourage you to look at other extensions pages because for system administrators who are the users of your extensions, it gets very complicated for them when they're using 15 different extensions and every single one of them is documented in a completely different way. Uh, it's, it's a lot more work for them. A sample extension that, are, are, are you the one who's working on a sample extension that's like an example of lots of different kinds of extension bits? Uh, actually, I am working on a I'm working on a program on the side that is creates like a skeleton for extensions, but that if that's what you're asking about, yeah, yeah. So there is efforts underway. Um, I don't know what the timeline is, but but that's certainly something that we're we're hoping to get done. Yeah. There is also um, as of this week, there's a boilerplate extension uh, in the Garrett repository. I merged that yesterday together with uh, Caldari, and it contains um, an example of the main extension type. They were still working on adding more stuff. Okay. But it has parser functions, special pages, API modules, SQL databases. It has lots of uh, sample data there. Have we linked to that repository from the extensions? Help I only page? did the code. I'm not sure about MediaWiki.org yet. Okay. Uh, so hopefully that'll be up on MediaWiki.org. But if you search get or if you search Garrett, you should be able to find. It. Is do you remember what the ex the name of the repository name was? Um, MediaWiki slash extensions slash examples. Okay. So yeah, if you go to the Garrett repository, uh, MediaWiki extensions slash examples, uh, there's some there's some in there. Oh, uh, about, uh, yeah. Yeah. oh well, uh, he just told me that he, uh, he's been working on the documentation for the PHP side of Resource Loader, which is exactly what I needed. And uh, it looks significantly better than it did, uh, say, three weeks ago when I first looked into it and had to ask on Wikitech. <laughs> yeah, and generally, I find that, if again, as an extension developer, if there's an area of documentation that's really frustrating the bejesus out of you, Mention it on the mailing list, mention it on IRC. Sometimes that's kind of the final motivator of, oh, yeah, I kept meaning to do that, but now that there's people actually wanting it, I'll go do it. Um, so don't be afraid to share your, your wishes, your dreams, your hopes. <laughs> Based on what you've recently said about extension craft and merging, uh, I've yeah. recently tried to implement a per page security, which I know is dangerous, but there are not only is it dangerous, there's, there's a dangerously large amount of uh, extensions promising to do diff this and things in different ways. And in the end, I've had to like customize uh, simple security for my own needs, but I feel like that should be merged. So I want to know what sort of advice you would have in trying to merge some mess like page, page, page extent, uh, security. 
Um, that's a really great question. I think I wound up merging uh, four extensions not too long ago as sort of a trial run of what would merging extensions look like and how angry would the home developers get at me, because I don't mind getting yelled at. Um, and what I found is we did develop some templates that says, you know, we're considering merging, just like we do on Wikipedia. Hey, we're thinking about merging this article. What do you think about that? We're using this talk page to get a conversation going. Um, and then I also recommend adding a message, and I think we've got a template one, um, that you can put on the developer's talk page uh, that says, hey, I know you're the developer of this extension. I'm thinking about merging it. Uh, and sometimes the developer is going to get back and say that, you know, no, 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 I don't want you to merge my extension. I, I need it to be maintained as it is. Um, but other times, they are, have often been very, very helpful and have said, oh, that's great. I'm so glad you're doing that. Here's five things that I know are broken. So I think that's kind of, is that sort of what you're looking Yeah, I think that's generally a good plan. And that also lets people know that that's coming down the pipeline, so it's not a shock to them. And again, I don't get too nervous about doing that because we do have a code repository that's a lot like revision history. So it's not like it's gone forever. Um, there isn't really a way to ever delete anything. It is the internet. Um, so if you wind up doing a merger and down the road it turns out one of those extensions maybe shouldn't have been merged, it's not like you've caused irreversible harm for the remainder of time. Um, and usually what we w recommend is, is if you're merging them, you kind of pick one of the directories and, and put a node in the other one. Um, but you don't want to clear it out exactly because people are still using it on individual wikis. So you just want to add a node in there like a readme, hey, this has been merged with this other extension. Because uh, otherwise it can break the functionality. Right? We want to be mindful of that. Other tips, questions, comments, concerns? Rather than adding a README, uh, I would suggest making a file named merge in all caps. Oh, yeah, and, there you uh, go. <laughs> people would probably notice that a lot faster than a line added to the end of the README. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I definitely, you know, uh, that's maybe a standard we can kind of push, but, you know, this has been merged is the name of the file. Uh, don't be afraid to put it a file name that, and you can also use um, Garrett to make comments about that as well if the extension is in Garrett. Although, to be honest, if it's in Garrett, it's probably an actively maintained uh, extension. Uh, any other? You could also use Bugzilla. Well, some of the extensions are in Bugzilla. You can use that as a way to communicate about the idea. How much more time do you yeah, have Yeah, we've left? got, uh, we're done. And this will be the last question. All right. All right. I'm sorry to ask, it's I'm okay. sorry to ask so many questions. Um, so in Garrett, which I don't have any experience with, um, do you guys have it set up so that you can specify different sets of code for different versions of MediaWiki? I remember you mentioned that earlier. Yeah, you can use branches, um, essentially. So. Okay, forks. so I could break. I could use different branches to go ahead and. There is a method, and I'm, I'm blanking on the specific Git. I'm still learning Git myself, so I'm blanking on the Git term. But yes, you can. That is doable. We haven't. Well, yeah, it's doable. That's the short answer. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, thank you guys very much. Um, again, a reminder that if you're looking for sessions in the bets room. Um, I'm sorry, if you're looking for uh, ex uh, ones that are in the printed guide in this room, they're going to be in bets, and the bets ones are being held here. Um, so if you wanted to keep the tech track going, you can stay right where you are. We don't kick you out. After lunch. Well, you could stay there for a whole lunch. Okay. If you're antisocial. Thanks, everybody. Thank